All right, so we're going to look at making symmetry adapted linear combinations for the sigma orbitals in ammonia. So I've already drawn ammonia here as a side view and the top view showing the three different hydrogens. And so we're wanting to construct uh, linear combinations of the sigma orbitals um, for each of these hydrogen atoms. All right, so ammonia belongs to the C3V point group. So I've already got its character table written out right here. And so what we want to do is find out what the character is for the uh, symmetry, or what the character is for these sigma orbitals. All right, so uh, the character is only dependent on whether or not these orbitals stay in place. And so for the identity operation E, all three of these orbitals stay in place, so the character of that matrix is going to be 3. Uh, there are two C3 operations. Uh, one of them is a clockwise rotation. The other is a counterclockwise rotation. And in both of those cases, none of the sigma orbitals stay in place. And so the character for that matrix is 0. And then there are three planes of symmetry. Uh, one of them is here. The other is there and the third is here. In each of those cases one of the sigma orbitals remains in place so the character for this is 1. So then this is a reducible representation so we need to reduce it and we can do this actually by inspection in this case. This is just equal to A1 plus E. And we can confirm that by adding the characters of E and A1. 2 plus 1 is 3. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And then 1 plus 0 is 1. And so that confirms this linear, this, uh, uh, redu this reducible representation reduces to these irreducible representations. So now to find the symmetry adapted linear combinations of these sigma orbitals. Uh, we need to do projections of each of these representations. And so we're going to do that. We need the projection of the uh, A1 representation on sigma 1, which is the uh, sigma orbital with this hydrogen atom right here that we've labeled 1. So this is just equal to all right, so we need to go through each of these symmetry operations. There's the identity operation, which leaves it alone. So that stays where it is. So we multiply by the character 1 times sigma 1. So that's sigma 1. So that's from the E represent or, or from the uh, identity operation. And then we need to take, there are two C3 operations. One of them is a clockwise rotation and the other is a counterclockwise rotation. The clockwise rotation puts 1 into 2. A counterclockwise rotation puts 1 into 3. So we're going to have sigma 2 plus sigma 3. All right. And then there are three sigma Vs. One of those leaves sigma 1 alone. One of them maps sigma 1 to sigma 2. And then the last one, which is here, maps sigma 1 to sigma 3. So this linear combination reduces to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 and then if we want to normalize this we multiply by 1 over the square root of 3 times sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3. So then we have another projection um, of E so let's project the E representation onto that same orbital sigma 1. So <clears throat> when uh, the identity operation operates on it. Sigma 1 stays put. So we have the character 2 times sigma 1. 
right? When the C3 operations operate on it, we map 1 to 2 or 1 to 3, and the character here is negative 1, so we have minus sigma 2 minus sigma 3. And then the character for the last is 0, so 0 times whatever happens is 0. So here's our, um, our symmetry adapted linear combination for um, for this, and if we want to normalize it, uh, we just multiply by one over the square root of six. Now we need to get another. So this is a two-dimensional representation. So we should have two different linear combinations. And the way to get that second linear combination is to take the uh, our linear combination here. We can ignore the uh, normalization factor for the moment. We take this linear combination right here and we permute our um, labels. So instead of sigma 1 being sigma 1, we can call it sigma 2, for example. So we could have another linear combination, which is... negative sigma 1 plus sigma 2 minus sigma 3. And what we need to do in this case is combine the uh, first linear combination we got right here with some multiple of this one. And I think the best way to sort of think about this is uh, to look at this this factor right here, 2 sigma 1. Okay, so these, these two both have coefficients of negative 1. This one has a coefficient of 2. So we want to multiply this by some factor to get rid of all the sigma 1s. And so we can multiply that by 2 and add these together. And when I do that, I get 0 sigma 1s. So those go away. I get 3 sigma 2's and I get negative 3 sigma 3's and so then I can um, figure out what the uh, normalized uh, let me move this up just a little bit the normalized um, linear combination which is 1 over root 2 sigma 2 minus sigma 3. So then there are three symmetry adapted linear combinations. There's the symmetry adapted linear combination for the A representation and there are two symmetry adapted linear combinations or the E representation. And these two linear combinations for the E representation should be orthogonal to one another and they are.